art is healing, these woods, this lake, this place is healing, and um, these people heal. So that's what this week is all about for me. Returning to me. As teachers, we have the opportunity to be part of the support system for all the kids, the kids who have good family lives, the kids who have hard family lives, and our coworkers and each other. Um, we talked about words yesterday. We can use our words to help encourage people to grow. Um, one of my favorite people and another quote for this morning is Brene Brown. We must be guardians of spaces that allow students to breathe, to be curious, and to explore. So anyone coming to camp is going to find what we call a rigid, flexible schedule. So we have pretty much scheduled your entire time here. However, um, you can participate in it as much or as little as you want to. That gives people the flexibility to go out into nature, to um, enjoy the atmosphere of Sagamore in general, or to collaborate with other people here on campus, um, and just take the time that they need. Our mornings start out with a morning meeting. Once our morning meeting is completed, we do a mindfulness moment where there's a creativity stretch. And as Lisa describes it, it's the same thing that an athlete would do preparing for a game. You've got to exercise those muscles. Let's take a couple minutes to make sure everybody has a nice workspace. Using the materials in the folder that I gave you, you're going to make four panels. Any size, any shape, any way that you want, but there's going to be four panels, and each one of those panels is going to represent those four seasons. If you didn't get to finish your brainstorming list yesterday, if you look at your list and you were like, oh crap, I didn't, I didn't finish it, I didn't empty everything from my brain, you can take time to do that. We have a couple minutes to do that. Okay, ground it in your seat, drop your shoulders. Get ready to get in that bubble, no talking, no phone. Okay, we'll start the pot. I'm going to give you a choice whether you want to continue any of these channels or do just a one day stretch tomorrow. If you brought things for the auction, the super awesome auction raffle fund that we have, Bernie is guarding over those, those goodies up here. You're welcome to leave those. I just wanted to give a gentle reminder that this is a national historic site and that when you're washing things, please remember to wash the sink all the way out. Um, if you're hanging things, hang them, obviously not on railings, but any of our drying lines, you know, hang them discreetly. And, and think about the, the tours. Um, Sagamore loves us, and we want them to continue to love us, so just a little PSA there for a second. So once that's completed, then there are um, different activities that are happening throughout the day. Yeah, water, so that's why I'm mostly out 
So they're lamenting that fact again. So forget which one. Well, she took what I was really shocked about was lichens way up high. Yeah, algae. It's like well, all all lichens are made up of two different organisms. I knew this was going to art teachers, their intention is to develop themselves professionally while also being social, catching up with friends, making new friends, and using what's accomplished here to better other people as well. It's to do better at what they do to help children. And what we do here is to have this space for just that sort of a goal and intention. So the intentions align, um, the mutual respect, the art teachers have a great respect for the buildings, for the grounds. It's, it, it's respect the, the value that this place brings and that only if it's protected can it be there to bring to future generations. It was built in 1897 by William West Durant and his vision for the place. His overall mission goal was to bring people out of the cities and into the wilderness and to teach people, show people the value of the great outdoors. And he designed the great camp to be his most business oriented one where people would come here, they would see it, and then they would commission him to build other great camps. And in 1901, 02, he ran out of money for that part of the mission, and so he sold it to Alvin Vanderbilt, who then ran it as a family estate. He passed away in the Lusitania, and his wife, Margaret Emerson, decided that she would keep it, and she turned it into a social place that was designed to bring different social groups together. The one that I'm in front of, the main lodge, is iconic, both in terms of architecture as well as in terms of the story about how the buildings were created and also in terms of its use. It's been replicated, the Main Lodge porch and its style has been replicated in other parts of the country. Never duplicated, but replicated many times. And it's a good example of the massive work that went into it in that most of the materials were sourced here. If you go inside, you see these huge beams that are indeed holding up the interior, and they would have come from this local area. The rocks on the, the boulders on the fireplace would have been sourced here. The sconces, the iron lights on the inside would have been sourced right up at our blacksmith up the road. So it's a good example and the porch that's surrounding it, it was particularly in Vanderbilt's time, it was the community space because you see the front door, there was a back door directly and the idea was you flow through and there were staircases all around it, dual staircases which we're bringing back the Vanderbilt's Margaret Emerson in the 50s decided that she wanted to spend more time in Hawaii and lacked the interest of keeping Sagamore Lodge, which is what it would have been called at the time going. And so she sold it to Syracuse University. And in the 70s, Syracuse University was going to donate it to the state. And given New York State's Forever Wild Clause, it would have had to have been left to fall into the ground. And so that's when two young philanthropists, Barbara Glazer, who's still very much involved in the organization, 
said this can't happen this is too important and the 70s was were the eve of recognizing the value of these sorts of what are now national historic landmarks and so they purchased it and they then purchased another part of the camp so it's all together and have ever since been using it for the mission we continue today which is to help people understand that intersection between people and the outdoors and the environment and to help people understand um, that this is a place you can reconnect with what what really matters and you have an individual responsibility to nature and also to community and continuing that communal mission that goes way back. We have limited Wi-Fi we're right on a lake. We have communal dining. We have people who don't know each other staying in the same lodge. We don't have locks on the doors, which just automatically you're in a place of trust and community. And you just get to be yourself here. And you see people that you might see once a year. There are many people who return teachers who may only see each other once a year when they're here. Roger Heinemann was instrumental in setting up the original aspect of the Summer Institute as a professional development. He was at that time working for the state. Barry Hopkins was instrumental in bringing it to Ashokan, which at that time was the field campus for New Paltz, and which was a wonderful way to incorporate nature. Um, the field campus was a beautiful site. Taking it into Shokan took it into nature. So there was more outdoor activities. Barry was also very connected to the Native Americans. And I think he might have even been, had a ceremonial title with them. And he incorporated a lot, a lot of their ceremony into the the uh, program of the Institute. Ashokan was going through changes just because the, the geographic area was changing, the lake was filling in, and um, they I, eventually New Paltz sold. So we changed up here and we've been here ever since. We've looked at a few other places, but nothing compares to this. I call the buildings rustic elegance. You're, you're in nature, but you're protected from nature. You, um, you're living the life of the Vanderbilts. Not exactly, <laughs> because we're pitching in doing some of our own things. Um, the staff here has always been really wonderful to work with. The more often we come, the more at home we feel, and the more at ease they are with having us here. The opportunity to incorporate nature into our, the, it feeds your soul here. Education is like going to culinary school. You learn the basics, a few cool party tricks, and by the end, you can cook a gourmet meal. Teacher teaching, however, is like waking up every day on an episode of Chopped, where the ingredients are completely <laughs> random. You're expected to do something amazing with whatever you're handed, while people watch and provide a running commentary, and occasionally, things catch fire. <laughs> So in recent years, we've found that we also have an awesome following of teachers and veteran teachers who may not need the um, uh, touching on different activities as much as we do in our main group um, program. So we have created these strands, and the strands allow for someone to come in and take one medium for an entire week. 
So it might be printmaking and you do printmaking all week, or it might be um, visual journaling for a week, or it might be fibers. And it really gives you the ability to then take the information that you're getting and dive in a little bit deeper than the programming that you would get in the general program. So this is the fibers strand. We started this strand in 2019 um, for people who wanted to do more focused work in a particular medium rather than um, a bunch of smaller projects. And we're working with a textile medium and creating our own fabrics. So um, okay. the first two days, two and a half days, will be messy work with paint. We're creating textures and um, working abstractly, experimenting with materials. And then the second couple of days, we'll be putting away the paint and starting to cut up pieces and put them together to construct pieces of work from these. I just was applying this and I had somehow gotten red on the corner of my scraper. And I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, oh, listen to me. Like, that's probably, it's usually more interesting, those little accidents that happen that you didn't intend. I think the answer for today is um, coming out of spending a, an enormous time by myself. Um, just uh, being with other people who enjoy this is, is nurturing to me. Everybody finds their own way of getting something out of this. Whether you make a lot of art or a little art, you find some new friends, you find new connections, um, you enjoy nature. I mean, all those things really make it what it's worth to come here. You know, I'm finding ideas from other people. I'm actually, a lot of times you'll find an idea and then you will. Um, you'll take it in a different way. You know, you will adapt it to your teaching environment, which I think is important. Um, not everybody's teaching environment is the same. So that educator may be teaching something and you are absorbing it in a di whole different way or you're adapting it to a lesson that, you know, you can add more to or that your students can get more out of. Coming here, um, I think one of the fun things is that you get to explore and try different things and you're exposed to a lot of different materials, different ways of working and even in something like the strands like this fiber one, um, you can take ideas that you have for working but experiment with the mediums in a different way. Um, I think it kind of recharges you because you, you allow yourself to kind of to fail in some ways. <laughs> Where you're taking you know, sometimes in school, you're trying you you want to make sure everything is perfect for your students, make everything look really good. So here's like a time to kind of like let loose and feel like, all right, let me experiment, let me try something different, see how it goes. And then it recharges you, I guess, in that sense where when you go back to school, it gives you another perspective to work with and engage your students to like show them like, all right, you gotta sometimes try something even when you're scared to do it and sometimes you know it's not gonna come out exactly what you think it might look like and then what else can you do with that piece or how else can you use that kind of experimental process you learn to influence your work as you move forward. Um, and yeah, it's always a great conversations with people who you get to work with, learn different things. Everybody loves to kind of share and help you grow. So it's like a really positive, um, fun and kind of just mellow time. So.
the PD that you get at a school district, you know, it's not prescribed. It's not, we want you to do this, this, and this. It's more organic. We look at the different things and the different offerings that are happening here at Sagamore. And then we as, as artists, creative people, then think about how do I incorporate that into my classroom because I felt what it was like to be that student. And so that gives me the opportunity to now bring it into my classroom and relate to my students. Whatever your decision is, Yesterday's it'll work. Right. You can just be visually no, different. Gotcha. So if you cut this piece exactly the way you cut it, oh, I see. I could overcome it. It'll have a wider. It'll have a thin side of line and then a wider. And a thick one. Side. Okay, I can deal with that. Yeah. Thanks, Diane. You're going to cut it a little way away from the corner of the board because that way when it folds up it's going to cover that corner. Just like, a, like the thickness of the board that far away. You missed our literary reading for the day. Oh, you did. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I do. This is how I start visual journaling because they don't have their sketchbooks, so we yeah, start with great. this. shopping for one. I can't believe you scored one. Um, well, I bought it. It's new and it's crappy. It's like, um, it's like a, what is that called when they redo stuff? Like, it's not, refurbished? No, it's not like an original typewriter. It's mm -hmm. like they made a copy and there's like a lot. new old photograph? Yeah. Yeah, photograph. yeah. And it has plastic parts. Uh -huh. Um, and I forgot how much pressure you have to use on the keys with the regular, like, I'm like, wow, my fingers are no longer, uh, <laughs> love him. Shallow and then just slide right through them and wipe out an eye or something. Right. Okay. Oh, I have to say, I don't know. The kids didn't check it out, it was too big. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. The way I'll know that. Yeah. So, what do you want to so, transfer from that image? Um, the flower around these shapes, some of these directional lines up here. Perfect. Um, May I borrow? May I have a piece of paper? <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
dip again. Yeah. Where is it? No. Okay. Okay. I, I definitely will let you know. I even looked in the other bar in the barn. We take advantage of the fact that we're in the Adirondacks, and so there is often an excursion. Uh, we've done plein air paintings at um, Buttermilk Falls, which allows us to bring the different medias and really uh, hone into the beauty of the place. Um, and then we've also gone to places like the Bog at Lake Utawana, which um, gives you an experience of pitcher plants and a bog, which is something that may be foreign to an art teacher, but is such an amazing experience. So we bring those into the program so that we take that science and that experience back to our classrooms, back to our districts, about the importance of outdoor education. I think some of the best conversations is, is when you're sitting at the dinner table, when you're sitting after a workshop and working on a piece of artwork and talking about your classroom and talking about your program. The exchange between teachers while they're here is a resource that you can't pay enough money for. Um, the hands-on, in the trenches experiences of people that have taught for 30 years are being shared with teachers who have taught three or four years. You can't buy that. Um, the networking that happens after people leave here, you have friends throughout the state and in other states. Um, another valuable resource that brings the world into your district. Um, I feel that I have some value here, and some of my closest friends are here, and this is the only time I really get to spend time with them. Um, so all of that, and I guess once you're, it's like once you're a parent, you're always a parent. Once you're a teacher, you're always a teacher, and, and you don't know what words you'll say or expression you give or story about your experience that you tell how much that will impact someone's life. First thing that I want to say is if you're a newbie and this is the first time that you're actually here in camp and you're thinking oh geez what could I ever teach in front of this group of people if you would have approached me my first year at Sagamore you I would have ran screaming if you said that I was going to get up and teach something and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about this place is it gives you the confidence. Whether it's the people that are coming up and constantly lifting you up or the magic of this space. Um, every year I come back because I feel more confident in who I am as a person, but also as an artist and even as a teacher. It would be almost cool yeah. too to take your gold leaf and do the halo. Oh like yeah, old, just on here. Yeah, just in the, yeah. the, like the old portraits, you know, yeah. like oh, gilded. Definitely. That'd be so cool. No. But don't be afraid to, if you're getting to the point where the whites <laughs> that you're blocking in and you want to paint like yeah, your normal process, yeah. just go for it. I know, that's what I was, I saw Jenny's, I was like, oh, I should do that. <laughs> yeah, don't be, don't be afraid okay. to do what you know. The yeah. tips that I give are just yeah, to... I love it because it's like posterized it. Yeah, and it so, helps you see yeah. it better. Yeah. Helps you see it better and it helps speed up the process. So. Definitely. It's gorgeous. I'm not because I asked you about it because I wanted to because I saw you were doing it. There's no big loss of paper. Did you go in it? Yeah, we, we like wandered around on it. And oh. Every time you took a step, you're like warping <laughs> down wow. six inches. I kept almost losing my shoes. Like we, we've created a community, you know, that good, is so supportive really of each cool other's experience. artwork, where many people may come to camp and say, I haven't touched artwork since I was in college because I'm so focused on what to do in my classroom. Yep. And there are such great examples of people here who were able to find the time to kind of intertwine it and then give testimony to the fact of how it helped them as being a teacher in general. If I don't come here, I don't have time to regroup before the beginning of the school year. 
and connect with like-minded people and be in nature and have the opportunity to invest in my own art because if I don't do that then I don't feel like I can share my full self with my students so by taking this time for myself then I'm actually serving everybody. It makes me a better human being. Kindred spirits. Yeah, I left it on the top. Oh, okay, okay. And she would set it on my mat and I said, yeah, that's really feel like I'm more the person I want to be when I'm here than I am any place else. People feed my need to feel good enough or be in, that I am enough. Um, not that I don't ask for it, they volunteer it and that's magical. I'm a lifer. Um, I come every summer. Uh, just my friends are here. I've spent my whole life looking for art friends, and I finally found them. The freedom to create without judgment and getting out of my head. Because um, in your own space, you're in a vacuum, and someone can walk by and just move two little pieces and you're like oh sh <laughs> mind blowing and it changes the trajectory of your work and you just I mean we have like this is like um, I don't know the incubator of brain power for art right here right so we are all so hard on ourselves and we don't realize that everybody else is because that you look at their work and go oh it's fabulous and they're like oh no and I'm like really really Okay, you have stage it? Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, you're one of us. Right? I mean, that's just... And this. I mean, we breathe. We don't have to worry about dinner. We don't have to worry about kids. I kind of like that I my phone doesn't ring every five minutes. I'm not in a hurry. The creative support, the time, the people. The people are amazingly nice and fun and creative and inspiring yeah just maybe a recommitment to, to things you know to creative things and It's the learning that happens with it. Sometimes people come here for an entire week and they take every single workshop and they walk away with 10 pieces of finished artwork. And then there's some years where you just come and you use Sag Sagamore to um, fill, fill your up cup. your soul. Fill your yeah. cup. Yep. Fill your cup. And that's the thing, you don't have to make everything here. Sometimes it's just absorbing what's happening and observing and seeing what other people are doing. And that's enough to get you motivated and that spark ignited. Yeah. 
a toothbrush. Oh, I'm not sure what I can do, but we'll talk about it. Um, just keep ironing. I'm going to do a little stretch too so you can see what the variegated does, just so you know you like it. But was it, is this blue too much or too dark or with the lighter just more simple? Um, I think either one. What do you got? Um, I was Are looking through look uh, Jan's. Yeah. Because she had more, that's what that color I feel was. like either of those Because I thought work. this would be, this is this one, which is probably too dark. Yeah. That's pretty phenomenal too. This color, like to go with that like then, yeah. or is it too much contrast against that tealy color? My, I think it's partly your aesthetic, but I would tend toward this because then these are going to be that strike of lightning that you really wanted them to be. So should this be pointing up or should the, is this pointing down? Um, that's really up to you, actually. I was thinking I want liked it up, but yeah. now that I'm looking at it, I'm sort of I think I like it down because this I is going to be up. I tend up. to agree. I was gonna say I'll make it for you, Jen. But mine, at like the minute I put mine down, they're like, I, like I can't without a signature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mary. Just because there's a vintage image on it. and then combining it with the print so you get a, a pastel transfer onto the print and then you print the ink on top of the pastel like through a second mm -hmm. middle school and high school for the most part teachers here but um, I teach elementary and I have done 2d felting with them um, it was with an artist in residence so I had another adult helping me but the kids fifth graders were really successful with it and they loved it and they were actually really 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 responsible with their felting needles and surprisingly did not break a lot at all uh, I think it's just all in how you present the materials and um, we did um, a mural of like the Chesapeake Bay and all the different animals and the ecosystem. So they each got to pick one animal and felt it onto, um, it was like felt, large scale, like a sheet of felt um, around a stretcher board and you can just felt it right onto there. It was really cool collaborative experience. So you could try it out with them too, if you dare. Oh. <laughs> Anybody gonna take 3D felting back with them? Do a little bit of that? Yeah? Because I ended up turning my piece into a, a little pin, and it was very easy, and I think super exciting. And, and I teach five through eight. Okay. I've done it. Yeah, I've done it with my eighth graders. Occasionally, I teach a studio art class too, and uh, I think 
yeah, I think they would they would really thrive with that. <laughs> we love we love wearables. Oh yeah. Do you put magnets on yeah. their lockers and stuff? And because what I've done in the past is like keychain them because you can just sew thread through the, through them and it will stay um, and just make a little loop and throw a keychain on it. That's awesome. But the pin is really fun. I think of something that's done at the high school level. I try to put a K-12 mindset towards it. Mm. And I think if acrylic glazing is the goal for an advanced art student in high school, what skills could I circle back and build in my elementary students that would help them be successful someday when they're at that level. Wait so, a minute, are you backwards designing? Imagine that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> are you correct? So, <laughs> you slide up all the time. So you think of like <laughs> acrylic glazing and you think, oh god, I can't do that in the elementary. Well, think of some of those foundational skills like value and how important it is for kids to recognize value. Um, I know a value scale is totally boring, but a kid could totally, I'm thinking, mix up three different values and paint something simple to figure out you know, what, how to create form that way. Um, I also thought about like taking a black and white photo, putting a layer of Mod Podge on top of it, and have them glaze color on it, wash it oh, up, water oh, down yeah. some. Oh, great idea, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Photography um, tips from Jen. Um, Ooh. Oh, yeah. 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 That's awesome. Before we even leave camp, um, we set up our entire program for the next year with ideas from all of the participants. So this is like a living thing where, you know, the participants are giving the feedback on how they want to to see the next year's program. It's very fluid too, I would say, because yeah. we, we do set it up, but then things happen during the year and sometimes we have to move things around and, you know, or an opportunity comes up, which is great. Beth and Michelle focus a lot on the art end and being the artist who you are, because we all need to do that to be good art teachers. I focus on the teacher end of it and I try to bring that in in the quotes and I talk to people, and if I haven't said it yet, it will probably come up, about being the student while you're here and think about how you feel when things are frustrating or you're, what you're feeling when you're challenged by stuff and take that back with you. And I think that there's a lot of value in remembering that part of your life when you're teaching. Um, the exchange between teachers while they're here is a resource that you can't pay enough money for. How many people experienced a little frustration or challenge doing a new art? <laughs> I think one of our goals in this professional development week is to help you to remember what it's like to be a student, to help you remember what it's like to feel like, I can't do this. Because our students feel that way a lot. Some of them don't show it at all. They just hold it all inside. Some of them act out in an angry way. Some of them just break down. Um, Try to hold on to that feeling of what it's like to be a student and go back to work with that compassionate heart. My quote of the day is from Henry Adams. A teacher affects eternity. He can never tell where his influence stops. We are very conscious of what it's like to be a newbie and we go out of our way to make sure that they know they're welcome and that we want them to feel comfortable. And even after the number of years I come, I have the anxiety of packing and the anxiety of doing things right and being amongst these talented, creative people and will I measure up and can I do it? And 
remembering that and being very astute to that feeling makes you more compassionate for the newbie and uh, what they're going through. And so it's a natural ease to welcome them on a genuine level. You know, I knew going into this, I've been a away from doing anything seriously creative for 25 years. So there's no maturity there. You know, I, I haven't developed any techniques and I am so out of my league if you look at it that way. It's not funny. But the, you know, you, they say water rises to the level. Guys, you brought me up. <laughs> After you're here for a day, you realize that every single person, yeah, is so supportive yeah, that absolutely. that like intimidating absolutely. feel just goes out yeah. the window. Right. And, yeah, it does um, take long to dissolve. That. And yes, you just immediately it's feel comfortable. And I, th I think I was just at like a like a breaking point. I was like, I need to do something for myself. Um, so I applied for it, and kind of like you know, a few months later, I think Michelle called me, and I think it was like early March, like right before everything got oh, shut wow. down. And I was like on the phone with her, and it was a day that I was just having like a like kind of a really tough time, and I just like started crying in my car, like before I went into my house. You know how we all do that in our cars. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> so I was having like my like moment in my car before I went into my house. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you have no idea like what means to me like Aww. I'm so excited um, and I was like incredibly nervous too um, and I was actually telling Michelle last night that being like my teacher self I was talking to my niece and I was like well do you know what a scholarship is and she's like it's when somebody gives somebody else an opportunity Aww. and I was like oh my yeah. gosh what like wow. and I just you know in that moment I was like it is an opportunity but being here I feel like so incredibly honored to have that opportunity. Something like stained glass where it was just so different and like had to deal with like rely on these tools and like this glass is different than this glass and it was just kept shattering yesterday and it was pieces that I picked out and I was like so like in love with. I was like oh, this blue like I was just it was and then it, they, I kept breaking them and I just like broke down and I was like I'm gonna quit and it was horrible and then um everyone here was two things everyone here was unbelievably supportive and amazing and gave me tips and tricks and different things did you try working on a board like it's and, and supportive just like it's okay and um that was amazing and then it was a crazy thing a butterfly um appeared <laughs> in the inside of the studio on um, in the barn on like a on the inside of the screen I was like oh I gotta go get it and like I this is right after I like broke down and I went and, like tried to release it outside it wouldn't leave my hand for over five minutes and it was licking me with its little kibashi thing and for like five <laughs> minutes Stop straight me with your and it like and it like was and it was just like this like like a wonderful moment of acceptance and nature and like I think it was probably licking my tears so it was like this whole like crazy <laughs> thing and then I was able to come in and I saw someone's work and I was like oh you don't have to do it this perfect way I could do it this way like me like it's okay and then I push through and then I did and there were so many signs when I drove in here and walked through here that this is the right place to be well just for me personally um, I lost my dad when I was young and there were things there were things like we had an old town boat and that's the first thing I saw when I came in and his favorite tea is inside and just it's just he's here and this is what he would want for me and there were I lo I pretty much lost that permission to be creative after he left and so it's just been a long <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um you know just a path like following a thread and so you know it's just walking along and just having him he's here you know and just having him and holding that and, and not crying all the time it's just been such a blessing and a gift somehow i i feel like we're all connected as art teachers here um there's something common in the way our brains operate or something too, and our compassion level and our yes. empathy that we feel. Um, so I listen to people speak and talk and share, and I can so relate. It's like, that's my life too, yeah. you know? I don't, there, there's a very, we're a lot the same. Well, I understand my students' frustration yeah. and when they just rip the paper. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I can say to them, I really wish you could have talked to me when you were so frustrated before you did that. But also.
also like that's okay I feel like I feel like maybe the start over is okay like it's, you know and yeah. to walk away and yeah. re and like regroup and maybe like when I like you know when I did the stained glass thing I cleaned up the entire thing washed the table and then I was like mm -hmm. I'm gonna paint for it and I ended up only painting for like 10 minutes but then it was just like I needed that Absolutely. to feel comfortable and then I was like now I'm ready again I would say it's like like energy like mm -hmm. like I've yeah. said all week that I'm exhausted like we're busy <laughs> and it's you know I think it's like an emotional drain and uh you know but it also energizes you too like like I feel See like how much you're like rejuvenated I don't um, think we've all realized just how much we've absorbed. Mm -hmm. And friendships. <laughs> friendships. Yeah. friendships. Yeah. Like for like That's real huge. big serious friendships, the, I think. Like the knowledge that there's a, a bigger community that you're a part of and that you can reach out if you're struggling with something. In our school districts, we're kind of on an island of one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. We get isolated in our, our spaces and we're not the same as a gen ed teacher and so coming here like there is such a strong sense of this is where I belong yeah I belong with these people you're not I, a weirdo you're not an yeah, yeah you're not the weird <laughs> <hard> person <laughs> you get me I am happiest when I have that kind of balance balance yeah, yeah. um and uh, that and it gives me a focus on where where I can go with what I, I thought I wanted to do because I wasn't sure, I you know, I didn't have any skills that I had honed, and and I still don't. I just know now there are all these different techniques that I can bring to what I do, you know. Um, like I keep saying, oh, they're like, where, where, what's that background? I'm like, oh, it's some some gel print that I threw away, you know, and I just saved it as you know collage material. And someone asked me, do you have any? Do you have any? Do you have any prints that you saved? I'm like, yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, maybe this isn't a throwaway. Yeah. It's not a throwaway. It's the beginning of something. I just hadn't figured out yeah. what to do with it. Okay. And now I'm learning skills that can bring me on that journey. So something like this really is relevant. It is where we stand and uh, operate from. And I think if we looked at things from an art perspective sometimes you could see how you could fuse in your math and your reading programs and make it so much more of a cross-curricular program. I have a lot to offer our, our regular classroom teachers. Um, I was one and so I can see the connect and I just wished that our administrators would see the importance. We plug social emotional in my district. Mm -hmm. What's, what's more social yeah. emotional so than art? Than art. <laughs> yep. I was given a gift. My district um, paid for me to come. <gasps> oh I was I paid out of pocket. And when I submitted for credit in service credit hours, my one of my administrators said, "Patty, do a purchase order. Yes, yeah. we will we'll, we'll pay you yeah, back. That's a yeah. lot. That's great. And I was like, open door. That's Here amazing. we go. Yeah. I'm going back with a supported voice, yeah. and I feel yeah. like I have a community to lean on and an right. organization that would support me. Yes. And if I needed something to defend in my field, I would have pe resources to yes. right. mm -hmm. tap yes. into. And I think that this has this camp has a lot of value in that, mm -hmm. but it also has the technique building, the skill building. We talk about our students. We think about them the whole time we're here. Mm -hmm. This is professional development, but it's also Absolutely. social emotional for us mm -hmm. as educators. repurposed to somebody who loves it, but all of these uh, proceeds go to um, the scholarship fund for uh, Nysada, so it's a great thing. 
One of the things that was very important to me in the beginning of Sagamore was not only the community, but the ceremony that went with make, helping me to feel de a deep part of the community, not just, yeah, I went to that institute for a week. And I felt like I took part of it home with me. Um, ceremony makes it real. The tokens that we'll offer to you tonight will be a tangible token that you belong to us. You belong to this Segamoran group. And I couldn't find the full quote. I didn't copy the whole thing for you. I have a small piece of it. And it seems so appropriate in a lighthearted way. It's from the Apple ad from 1997. And the beginning of it goes, here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. Yes. Remember how good it felt to be here when you're in your classroom? 
remember how good it felt to be here when you're at home and you're rushing around and you're trying to get dinner on the table and you're doing the dishes and you have something that you were supposed to do to take to school tomorrow but can't quite remember what it is. Socrates is the quote. It's a very short line. Be aware of the barrenness of a busy life. And um, this is your token. You are a wonderful teacher. And you're so amazing. <laughs> like, Thank you. Remember to breathe. I will. <laughs> Michelle, love your sense of humor. Your wit is so awesome. Keep me grounded. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Quite quiet one. <laughs> Come back. Thank you so much. You know that you're never allowed to skip this week, right? Okay. okay. That'll be good. <laughs> thank you for coming back. Thank you for back. all you do to make so such a awesome. wonderful program. I'm so glad to be back. I feel like we reconnected, and it's awesome that you've come back. Yeah. And I approached you and said, would you come to Sagamore? Yes, you invited me. I am so glad I did that. Me too. <laughs> oh, Kelly. Thank you for being beautiful, you. You are such an amazing person. This is for you, but I need a hug. I would love a hug. <laughs> you are one of the bravest people I know. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so honored to know you. I'm so honored to know you. You're a dynamo. Oh. I do not. You just blow me away. Oh, you're so sweet. Beth, you're part of this group. <laughs> Don't ever say you're not an artist. I know. Because you are. Thank you. Coming here, I think for me, has been so uh, renewing and inspiring because now I've met <laughs> the best people doing the best job in the world. And you guys, what? I just can't stop thinking about what you must bring to your students every day and I'm so glad to know you all during this week and to see you and be inspired by you and I just want to say thank you and thank you to this one who really pushed me to encourage me to come. Actually I'm a lifer <laughs> and thank you Michelle, thank you Diane, thank you Beth, um, just the best part of the year. I'm coming back every year. Tonight's a difficult night because we're ending the week, but I've been looking forward to it all week. Um, I spent some time in the hen house, or Zen hen house, today all by myself. And I was incredibly proud and uh, full and happy to, you know, do what I did this week. And then to be able to walk around and see everybody's amazing work and the challenges you stepped up to and completed them all. And I was so, so impressed and uh, happy, and I feel so much the same way that you do, Cindy, that um, I observed a lot this week, you know, and now I feel like I'm gonna go home, and I really like I was a sponge. This has been an incredible, incredible experience for me, and I thank each and every one of you for your kindness, um, your support, all the knowledge you're just willing to impart. And I have to really especially thank Michelle and Beth for really kind of pouring me in slowly and hooking me. <laughs> We're good at that. Yeah, you are. <laughs> thank you, all of you. This has been wonderful. See you next year.
Now he's dancing with pandas, and we don't understand it. But the bears all demand at least one waltz a day. So he goes wah 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 waltzing with bears. Raggy bears, shaggy bears, shaggy bears too. And there's nothing on earth Uncle Walter won't do. So he can go waltzing. Wah, 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 waltzing, so he can go waltzing, go waltzing with bears. <laughs> 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 <laughs>